how to add new units in the turn-based static project. Because I know that even though the units that are coming with the project are probably the best unit you've ever seen in your life, I also understand that you probably want to integrate your own units and customize the project as much as you want. And I must admit that the process to import the units in the project is a little bit complicated, and there's a bunch of little steps you have to do. I tried my best to simplify the process as much as possible, but there's still a few things here and there that are a little bit clunky. And that's why today I'm going to import a new unit as example, and go through all the steps with you. So let's get to it. In Unreal, as you can see, there's already a few units in the project and you can use them as example to import your own unit. And for all those units, there's a few things. There's first the skeletal mesh, obviously. So I have it right here. For all my six units, I have one skeletal mesh. So one for the bat, chicken priest, slime ranger, and warrior. And then also for all those units, I have a texture, but that texture is more of an icon. It's not a texture for the material of the unit. It's really just an icon that is used by the user interface to show the selected unit. So we have a skeletal mesh and a texture. And also for all those units, we have animations. So we have five animations per unit and all the units have the same animations, the same five animations. So we have an animation to attack, one when the unit is dead, so that animation. Then we have the hit animation when the unit receives an attack, the idle animation, obviously, and finally a walk animation. And all those five animations are the same for all my different to units that we have right here. So by default, the project support those five animations, but you can replace them by your own if you want to. So we have all the five animations for all the different units. And the last thing we have is an animation blueprint, one for each of the units. So one animation blueprint for the bat, chicken, priest, the ranger, slime, and warrior. And that's where we are deciding which animation we want to play. And today we're going to set up all those assets. So the first step is to import the animations and the mesh for the new unit we want to use in the game. So I have one right here. I have a llama unit that I would like to import in the game. As you can see, it looks a little bit like a chicken, but don't worry about that. It's a llama, I'm sure. So here we have an icon of the llama, then we have a skeletal mesh of the llama also, and finally the five animations that are going to be used in the game. So attack that, hit, idle, and walk, and we're going to import all those assets in Unreal. So I'm just going to first create a folder for my new unit, so the llama folder, and inside the folder I'm going to start by importing some assets. So First, I'm going to start with the icon and the skeletal mesh. So you can just drop that in Unreal and do an import all. You can ignore those warnings because that's just because my mesh is a little bit broken and it doesn't really matter because it's an example. I'm going to delete a few materials, delete like that, and I'm going to edit the last material that we have just so we have a nice color for the llama. So I'm going to multiply it, let's say, by 20, whatever, it doesn't really matter, base color. And I'm going to give it a little tint of orange, the same as my icon. Here we go. So we have a nice color for the llama. Perfect. I'm going to assign it to all my uh, different slots in my llama that we have right here. So we're just going to assign, assign, assign. And here we go. We have a nice yellow llama. Perfect. So the unit is set up uh, and it comes with a physical asset and a skeleton. Actually, I don't really need that animation, so I'm just going to delete it. It should not have been created. And finally, I have my icon that I'm going to use in the user interface. Perfect. And then we're going to import the animation. So let's go back in Windows Explorer and I'm going to drag and drop those five animations in Unreal also. So here we go. Make sure to select the skeleton of the llama because that's what we want to use to, for the import of the animations. And here they are. We have this five nice animation for the llama. Perfect. And now that we have all the assets imported in Unreal, it's time to create the animation blueprint, which is going to drive all the animations of the llama. So let's create it. I'm going to right click on my skeletal mesh, create and create a new anim blueprint, which I'm going to name ABP underscore llama because it's the animation blueprint of the llama. Perfect. Let's save this and then open the animation blueprint. To make it simpler, all my units are using the same exact setup for their animation blueprints, and they are all driven by an interface, a blueprint interface that lets us easily set which animation we want the unit to play and it also simplifies the setup process a little bit but it also means that the first step we have to do is to implement that interface so let's go in class setting right here and i'm going to go add a new blueprint interface right here it's going to be the bpi underscore unit animation which is used by all the different units and that interface comes with two functions one function to get the current unit animation state and one function to set the current unit animation state we're going to use those two functions everywhere else in the code so we can easily communicate with all the 
different units type. And now it's time to go implement the logic of those two functions. And we're going to do that inside the event graph. But as I said, all my units are built the same exact way. And I strongly recommend to do the exact same thing for your new units. And by that, I mean to simply go inside another animation blueprint and copy the whole code and paste it inside your new unit. That way you're going to make sure that everything works out of the box. So let's delete those two nodes right here because we're not going to name them. We're going to copy everything from another blueprint. So let's go back in the content browser and let's copy, let's say the ranger, doesn't really matter. Let's go inside its animation blueprint. So let's open it. I'm going to write, drag it right here and then we can go inside the event graph and we have all those nodes right here that we can simply copy. Copy all the nodes, go inside the ABP Llama and paste them right here inside the event graph. And now if I compile, I should have a few errors because I have a variable right here that is not created yet. So let's just create it. I'm just going to right click on it and create the variable the animation state. Perfect. Now let's compile and now everything works as expected. No error, no warning. Everything's great. And that's how I'm implementing the first function that we have inside the interface right here, the set unit animation state. And all that code right here is just setting the animation state of the unit and making sure that everything works as expected. But we have one second function right here, the get unit animation state. So let's go inside that one and we have to add a little something. We have to return the state of the unit, which is the new variable we just created. So let's grab it and drop it inside the state just like that. Perfect. Now the interface is implemented properly and everything should work. And now we just have to go implement the animation. So let's go inside the anim graph. And for this one also, I'm going to recommend to go copy the animation graph of another animation blueprint and paste it right here because it's just going to make things a little bit faster for you. You can always build your graph if you want. But in my case, since it's a pretty simple graph, I'd like to just go back inside the other unit, go inside the anim graph and copy everything that's in there. So just uh, these nodes right here. Go back inside the AVP Llama, inside its anim graph, you can paste them right here. Here we go and reconnect them to the end. Now if I compile once again, it's going to throw a bunch of different errors because those animations are the animations of the Ranger and they are not going to work on the new Llama we just imported. So what I'm going to do is go in the bottom right corner, we have the asset browser right here that you can select some animations from and we can replace the current animation by those animations by simply dropping them on top of the old ones. So I'm going to take the llama attack right here and drop it on top the ranger attack and it's going to replace it so i'm going to do that with all the other ones so i have my dead animation that i'm going to use right here and right here i have my it animation which i'm going to use right here my idol animation right here and finally my walk animation which is just right here perfect now i should be able to compile for real and now the llama should play its animation and you can test it a little bit further by going inside the anim preview tab that we have right here and press on those different buttons that we have right here so we have the test attack button that displays the attack animation of the unit. We have the test death animation that tests the death animation of the unit, obviously. Then we have the hit animation that displays when the unit is hit. And then we have the idle, which is the default one. We have the walk, so you can make the unit walk. And we have the respawn, so we can see the unit respawning. It works a little bit better if it dies before. So let's press the death animation first, and then you can play the respawn. Here we go. Now you can see that all the animations are working properly and they are all connected to the right places. Perfect. So now we're done with the animations and importing all the different assets. Now we just have to go use the new llama in the game. So I'm just going to go back in the content browser. And it's actually super simple to add a new unit in the game because everything is driven by an enum and the data table. And that's it. So now if I go, let's say, in my blueprints right here in core in units, uh, we have a folder that is named the utilities. And inside this one, we have the unit type which are all the different units that are currently in the game. So we have the warrior, ranger, priest, slime, chicken, and bat. And in our case, we want to add a new unit. So let's add a new enumerator element right here that we're going to name Llama because that's the new Llama we just created. Perfect. Let's, so let's save the enum. And now the game is aware of the unit. It's aware that the Llama unit exists and it can now use it everywhere in the game. There's just one thing though. The Llama units doesn't have any statistics yet. Doesn't have an animation associated to it. Doesn't have any statistic, any spells, anything. So let's go add some statistics to that unit. And that's going to be inside the data table that we have right here. The DT default unit data per type. So let's open that one. And that data table contains all the different assets and statistics 
think of all the different units we have in the game. So we have a row for the warrior, ranger, priest, slime, chicken, and bat. And we're going to add ourselves one new row for the new llama. So let's add the right here. We have to name the row the exact same way we named the unit type in the inner. So llama, write it the exact same way. And then we have to make sure that the unit type, uh, the first variable that we have right here, also match the same name. So llama. So you have to make sure that those columns are exactly the same. So the llama row name and also the llama enum value. And then everything else is completely up to you. So first we have the assets category in which we can set the mesh of the new unit. So in my case, I'm going to select the SK llama, obviously, because that's the llama. Then we can also select the animation blueprint of the unit, which is the llama animation blueprint, which is created. And finally, the icon. So I'm going to look for my llama icon that I imported at the beginning. Perfect, that's it for the assets. Now the unit is going to have a visual in the game. And then under that, we have the stats category. So these are all the different stats of the unit. So first we have the valid tile type. So all the different types of tile that the unit can walk on. By default, all the units are going to be able to walk on the normal cost, double cost, and also the triple cost tile. So these three tile types are going to be available to pretty much everybody. But then you can be a little bit creative and then add another tile type. And that one could be, let's say, the flying units only because your llama can fly it because it's an awesome llama. So why not making it fly in the game that's great and also you can decide if you want the unit to be able to move diagonally in game or not in my case my llama is awesome it's going to walk in diagonal because why not so good with those two variables now the path pending should be configured properly then we have the available spells so all the spells that can be casted by the unit you can add as many spells as you want so let's say i want to add my test spell why not then i can add let's say a sword slash because my llama has a sword i'm sure and and then maybe you can add a healing spell. Why not? You can add as many spells as you want. And then you can edit all the different statistics of your unit. So how many health points the unit currently has and has by default. So let's say 20 and 20. The unit has 20 health point because it's a pretty squishy llama. Why not? But we want the llama to be able to run super far. So let's say 15 movement point. Perfect, the llama can run crazy far. And then for the action point, let's say, I don't know, seven action points doesn't really matter. You can make them as big or as small as you want. Then we have the spell state category. That one you can simply ignore it because these variables are just used in game at runtime. It's not going to define any statistic of your unit. I'm not really sure if I made a good decision by putting them there, but here we go. They're there. So just ignore them. And then you have the AI category, which is going to let you change the behavior of the unit when it's not controlled by a player. So here, the first variable is the movement logic, and that's just going to define where the unit is going to go at the end of its turn. So once it's done casting all its spell and doing all its magic, it's going to either move towards the closest enemy, move towards the closest ally, move away from the enemies, or move away from the ally. So you have four options to pick from. So in my case, let's say I want my llama to run away from the enemy why not at the end of the turn it's done casting everything just run away it's fine and finally we have the unit ai class in which you can specify a custom unit ai that you built yourself for that specific unit in my case in the project by default i have two default unit ai i have the chicken and the ranger and they don't really represent the essence of the llama so i'm not going to use those two ais by default i'm going to use the bp unit ai which is the parent class of all the different units ai you're going to create so by default let's make the llama a default AI and then later on if you want to add a different AI for the llama you can do it yourself. Perfect so now you can simply save the data table and the unit is ready to be used in game so let's go back in the game and test all that. I'm going to go inside my debug map because the unit was not added in any of the different scenarios we currently have in the game. So let's go in the debug map. Here I'm going to generate a grid real quick. So just, just go in the grid tab and generate a grid. And now I can go in my combat tab to be able to add my unit on the grid. So in add remove unit right here, you can see that at the end, we have the new unit we just created. So we have the nice orange llama that we have right here. And if I select it, I can add a bunch of llamas on the grid if I want to. So here we go, I have a few llamas. I'm going to move a few llamas in the opposing team. So here I can add this one and that one inside the opposing team. And I'm going to also make them controlled by the AI so we can see if the code works. So right now I'm controlling this llama right here in the top left corner. And I'm going to fight against those two AI. So I'm going to start my combat. And now that we can see that I have a ton of movement point because the llama is awesome and it can run super far. So I can go like all the way here if I want to. 
That's good. The animations are playing too when the Lama is walking around, so that's good. I can cast my spell, so I have my test spell right here. And since it's a debug spell, I can cast it as many times as I want. So yeah, I'm not sure that's really balanced. Anyway, so I can cast this spell as many times as I want. And if I'm done, I can cast the other spell. So I have my sword slash spell right here that I can cast. And I also have the healing spell that I can cast right here, right here. Why not? It doesn't really matter. And I can also cast my debug spell as many times as I want because, yeah, I should not have selected that one. Anyway, now I can run away because it's the turn of the AI and it's probably going to kill me because it probably can also cast that spell as many times as it wants. So I'm just going to end my turn to see how it's going to go okay so the ai is thinking about what it's gonna do i guess do, 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 do. it's thinking 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 yeah it's taking time i think my debug spell is messing things up a little bit okay so now the ai attacked me attacked me and it's probably going to attack me until the end of time i'm just going to speed up the things a little bit there we go two 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 i think i'm gonna die yeah i died Anyway, so now I can end the combat and we can see that it seems to work. Both my chicken um, llama controlled by the player works in the game and also the llamas that are controlled by the AI also work and they killed me. So I guess they are pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, so now you know how to import your own units in the game. Don't make the same mistake as me and use the debug spell because the debug spell is just for debug. And that's going to be it for today. So I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye.